Good morning, everyone. Welcome to CML InfoTech. Today, we're talking about inter-VLAN routing, VLAN configuration. What is the use of routing? How we can do uh, inter-VLAN communication from CCM day nine. I think we were discussed about uh, single VLAN configuration. So I'll give you a brief introduction for just two, two, two to three minutes about the previous session. Let's say, when you have a single network, you can connect all the device into the into a single switch where we have not configured anything additionally into the switch. Either you can purchase, uh, let's say, dummy switch from any local market, which doesn't require any configuration, or even you can purchase a configuration a US based to switch from any vendor, and you can just connect any devices into any port of that switch that would be act as a single network. One network in the sense, all system should communicate each other within that, uh, within that uh, frame. Like example, if you can see my design, I have connected, this is a switch which contain, let's say eight computers connected into a single switch. And, if I wanted to communicate all the systems in a single network, MATLAB, if they wanted to communicate each other, that's the requirement of the customer. I have a 10 computer, I wanted to communicate each other, that's it. In this case, you can uh, offer a 10 device, it could be anything, edge devices, let's say 10 computers, and 10 copper cable, and minimum 10 port copper switch, where you can place 10 devices. Generally, it comes like eight ports, 12 ports, 16 ports, 24 ports like this. You can consider the minimum number of required ports in the switch and you can deliver it. So there is no matter of the configuration in the switch. All this, what they wanted to do, to plug, your, plug the customer system into the switch and assign IP address to the system. So there you need to know what kind of IP that I need to give. As you know, class A, B, C which is default, uh, like we call it as a default network in class A 8-bit, class B 16 and class C 24. So here, if you look into this design, I have mentioned 192, 168. When start with the 192, you need to understand that is class C, wherein 24 bits, starting from 24 bits belongs to a network. Only the last portion belongs to a host. If you look into, my red circle, you can see that 192 a PC2 10 PC3 192.168.10. So these three, because of class C, the first two, three octet must be matched. And the last octet, I could give one, two, three, four, anything up to 254. Okay. So here in this design, what is my minimum requirement? I need to have a three different networks, three minimum different networks. So in reality, in major cases, how we define in a different network, as an example, we would say uh, like IP telephony, one network, Wi-Fi solution, another network, access control system, another network, servers, laptops or workstations, CCTV, Within CCTV, there are again multiple network like workstation, storage, server, recording server, failover, management server, could be anything. So when you wanted to define an individual network, then you will be segregated in a different network methodology. Here, I would say 192.168.10 is one network. And if you go to another computer, which you can see here in, in like, uh, blue color circle, like a PC456, I've mentioned 190 to 168, 20, 21, 22, 23. They are in a different network. So first of all, why do I wanted to make them different network? Because of the customer requirement. Generally, the traffic from one services shouldn't go to another traffic. In, in reality, like IP telephony services must go from IP telephone to their server. Then, uh, client to server or uh, access point to access point server access control system client to access control client server so they have to communicate each other but 
within that circle. So here come to the conclusion. I have connected system from port, port number one until port number eight continuously. So people who looks to the switch can not identify that how they are segregated by looking into the configuration and the functionality can address it. Now, the first task, in order to make them a separation in a switch, there the, the terms we used as a VLAN, virtually we will create a LAN. Actually, that, that red circle is one LAN, one network. The blue circle is another LAN or another network. By having a physical switch, which we cannot configure anything, it's a default dummy switches, we cannot define multiple network. We used to use a single network. So to define a different, different network that you need, you need to go with first management switch, which the switch will have operating system. In Cisco switch, we generally referred as iOS. Or even in Juniper switch, we referred as Junos. Likewise, there are each individual company who preferred switches will have different operating system. But majority OS will have the uh, same concept, only the commands is a little different. Now, I wanted to define a VLAN for, for uh, to make a separation in the network. Example, I have a three VLAN, so I need a three different uh, network. So let's consider it in this way. As I said, you have uh, We have a single switch and one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the port number of the switch, seven, eight. Okay. So here, one, two, three, one group, four, five, six, another network, seven, eight, another network. So in the manageable switch, in the unmanageable switch, you cannot think about making a separation or a group. Okay. Only when it comes to know that you need a different network, then you need a manageable switch. How we can define a different network in one manageable switch? That is a term we call it as VLAN, virtual LAN. By default, when you procure any vendor switch and when you unbox and when you connect it, all the available ports in that switch belongs to a single network, which is called VLAN 1 or default VLAN. You cannot edit, delete, remove, you can't do anything. If you need a more VLAN on your requirements, you need to create a VLAN starting from VLAN number two until the VLAN number 4094, which is 12 bits. You can create any VLAN. It is depends on your design. Generally, what we will do when we do, when we do design the network, one of the key elements, either we will ask the customer to share the IP address, or we will create an IP address and think about the third octet. You have four octet of your IP address, okay? And if you think your edge devices are less than 254, like the 200, 100, what we will do, example, uh, we will say 192, 168, 10, 0, 24. This for one VLAN. That VLAN ID, which is match with your third octet of your network. That is one of the design concepts, keep in mind. The other VLAN, which is the third octet, must be matched with your next VLAN ID, the way it will go on. If you look into our design, we will design in this way, like you can say VLAN 10, the third octet of your subnet is 10. And if you look into VLAN 20 or your third octet of your network is 20. Therefore, we define a VLAN 20. And your, uh, the department of sales, the 30 VLAN ID would be matched with your network address of 30, which is the third octet of your network. And when you configure a VLAN, the VLAN ID is mandatory. And the VLAN name is optional. If you didn't define the VLAN name, your VLAN ID will be appeared as your VLAN name. But for you or for us to understand this VLAN is specifically used for this particular purpose. We used to give a VLAN name. Example, you know, when we design the services required like 
we need a Wi-Fi network. We need a, even though within Wi-Fi we need a management network. We need a guest uh, SSID. We need a corp SSID, or we need a many services. The service name we referred as a VLAN name, and for the services we will give a one VLAN ID as well. So here, in order to communicate to each other, you need to define a different network first. Then you need to uh, assign network or interface into that specific network. So we will define the requirements in this way. Example, the first task, your requirement is you have a switch, you have a VLAN one, you have another VLAN, you have a VLAN three. So VLAN 10 you have, VLAN 20 you have, VLAN 30 you have the port number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So the first two tasks. Of course, you need to define a host name. Depends upon the required uh, the naming convention. Like we used to always say is about CSW, which is core switch, or we used to say ASW, which is called access switch, or we used to say SFW server farm sf sw server farm switch depends that you need to define a host name second create a vlan create vlan in order to create a vlan you need two things what is a vlan id and what is a vlan name and how many vlans that you need to create third things by default all the ports of the switch is belongs to default vlan one so let's say port number start from one to three must be under VLAN 10. So you need to define ports to a specific VLAN. VLAN. Okay. You can create up to 4094 VLAN, but again, which VLAN number that you need, either you need to design by yourself or the customer will like any government entity or any established company. They already having a VLAN schema. They want to tell us that I need this many network and this are the VLAN ID, VLAN name, and this is the network address available IP. Then the, what else? Then the gateway, et cetera. They will, they will be giving us. Well, we have to ask them uh, next. After you create the VLAN and assign the ports to a specific VLAN, in the core switch, you need to define VLAN interface IP. I'll tell you why it is. Okay. Now, in any network, when you have a multiple VLAN and if they wanted to communicate each other, you must need a core switch. The minimum requirement of the core switch is that the core switch must be having a routing functionality, communicating a system from one network to the same network within the network. We call it as a LAN or we call it as a switching. When you want to communicate from one network to another network or one VLAN to another VLAN, then that would be considered as a routing. So in order to perform routing, you need a core switch, okay? If you have a single switch in your design, that must be a core switch. So keep in mind, uh, oh, majority of the switch will be performed core routing functionality, but you need to con confirm that, yes, the switch has routing functionality because we are always not dealing with the Cisco. There could be more than 10, 20 vendors that we come across, but the customer will prefer us to go with the specific model. When you go for a specific model, you need to go with the data sheet to understand the switch can perform routing as well, if routing functionality is mandatory. Okay, so hope you're understanding. So now if you look into this design, you can see that we need VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30 in this switch. The first task for us to configure a host name, then the VLAN configuration. So I'll give you a, a configuration template. 
Hope you can see the configurations. Any switch, for once you boot, in some switches, they are gonna ask you to enter the username and password. In this case, uh, default username and password, so admin and admin you need to put. Then uh, the first mode is called exec mode or the then user mode. The, from the user mode, if you put enter, the user mode will become like, like this with the switch name. If it switch, it will come like a switch. If it's router, it comes with the name of called router. Then you need to press enter called EN, enable, which is privilege mode. There you can see all your configuration, which is called show commands. Then in order to do any configuration, you need to go to config team, configuration mode. Then you need to put host name, then what host name that you need. It could be anything. By default, the switch host name is called switch. After the switch host name, you need to put what VLAN that you need. In order to create the VLAN, you need a two things, VLAN ID and the VLAN name. VLAN name is optional. If you are not defined any VLAN name, it comes with the default name, which is the name called VLAN ID. So I have defined three VLANs here. Okay. Now, if you have to look into this design, uh, your interface, fast ethernet which means 100 mbps port or you can see gi giga ethernet which is 1000 mbps or even you can see 10g instead of fast ethernet you can see 10g 0 slash 1 which is 10000 mbps if you look into this design the first three ports f01 f02 and f03 of the switch belongs to vlan 10 so either we can go with a single statement by defining like interface range f0 slash 1 hyphen 3. In a single statement, you can configure all. Why I define an individually? You can see an additional command called description. The description is very important for any implementation. The reason for that, like after the implementation, Later, if a port is down or the port is not working, you need to check the specific specific port is connected to on which server, which product, which services. Like we we would be handing over in the form of like a UAT user acceptance test or uh, handover documents or checklist in, in, in a various name. We are submitting the final documents to the customer where we defined this interface is used to this purpose but then, but for an it admin it is one of the easy way we, of course they should have access to the switch when you when they access the switch they can go to that specific if let's say a customer is reporting my port number one is not working so they can log into the port number one and by having description they can understand that is connected to where. So this, you can give anything. It depends upon the easiest way of understand. Like you can say that connected to NIC one of the PC one. So you can simply say that this port is, you go and check the PC one where it is, and maybe the port is unplugged or loose from the backside of the system, connect it again. So this description will very, very much helpful for us to troubleshoot. Okay, so it's mandatory. Then this command, switch port mode access, as you know, in every switch, the port of the switch will be acted act in a two manner. The switch, either the switch port, you're gonna connect any edge devices. It could be telephone, access point, Wi-Fi, or it could be anything. When you connect, like we call it as a downlink okay or we can call connected to edge devices when you connect it to any edge devices this port will be carry only one vlan info okay the same port if i remove a system or any edge devices connected to another switch okay this port will act to carry multiple vlans 
and even we can block the unknown or not required VLANs on a port basis. But by default, if I connected that specific port into another switch, this port will be carry more than one VLANs automatically. When it's carry more than one VLAN, the port is called as a trunk port. Okay. When it is connect to any edge devices and they started performing by single VLAN communication, we call it as access port. So if you're not defining whether it is access or whether it is trunk, still it will work. But as a hacker, if he joined to the company and by do by malfunctioning or by DOD, like uh, man in the middle attack, there are many based on certain applications. Uh, a person laptop where a user is connected to this port, this employee by doing some forceful uh, commands, a forceful like a message to the port telling that this side is I am a trunk. So this port is automatically become a trunk. So that will be the benefit or the beauty of the trunk port will allow all the informations. So someone else who's sending to somewhere, if it's trunk port, it will also carry through this way. Okay, so to avoid this, to avoid this, if some forgery or some malfunctioning or some untrusted traffic arrived to a port, the port shouldn't able to detect. In this case, we have to by manually define the port must be what? Access port or trunk port. Okay, hope you understood. If I have not defined access or trunk, the port will be auto negotiable to the other side. If this side says I'm a trunk, this will be auto negotiated to trunk. Instead, we, we manually define whether it is access or trunk. We'll talk about trunk later because when, when it comes to the trunking concept, there is again a protocol based and the protocol must be matched in order for the uh, two way negotiation between them. So here, Uh, give me a second, please. So now we're back to the to the port, which is called port number one, port number two, and port number three. So if you look into this, all three ports is belongs to VLAN 10, but by default, all the ports are will belongs to VLAN 1. So what you need to do, which port that you wanted to move from VLAN 1, you can directly define the new VLAN details. Like switch port access VLAN 10, it will go from by default VLAN 1 to VLAN 10. Same way. You can see the port number four, five, and six, which is under VLAN 20. And I put the description like port number four by physically connected to PC4, and this is the IP. Same way, I have defined the port number seven and eight for VLAN. This must be VLAN. So, okay, if you are more confident on your configuration syntax, you can directly copy paste to the configuration. Okay, so let me do one thing. Let us check the switch configuration first. And let's say this is the lab. If you look into the PC, it's already having IP address. This is the lab. If you look into the system, it has already IP address defined. Then look into the switch, CLI. So VLAN. If you look port number two until port number all. Excluding port number one, all are 
by default under VLAN 1. The reason for port number 1 moved to VLAN 10 that we defined sometimes before. Now, we have only VLAN 10, so we need to configure the remaining VLAN. And to see the running configuration, the command called show run. If you enter show run, you can see only port number 1 that I defined in VLAN 10. And the rest of the port, there is no configuration, which means this port is belongs to VLAN 1 by default. So let me take the configuration copy. Okay, so here, from enable, I'll, I'll copy until, until port number 8, copy. Now we'll go to switch configuration. This is switch configuration. Either you can right click and paste, or you can you will have a paste in this corner. Yeah. Now you can see the configuration we have already applied. So you can see enable config t host name, then VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So three VLANs has been configured. Okay, then port number one, two, three. In, in, in reality, majority of the cases, we will never uh, take a time for typing by manually. We do in, in uh, uh, Notepad or Notepad++ plus plus and we'll paste it. So that's easy. If you are uh, completely aware about the configuration in the Notepad. So let us say do write. Write is the command for saving. Do because we are not in the privilege mode. Do write. So we have configured and save the configuration. Let me check with the show run. You can see here the port number one, two, three, four, until port number eight, we have configured. Then you can go with the show VLAN command to see that port number one, two, three belongs to VLAN 10, where those port is moved from VLAN one. So port number one to eight has been segregated between 10, 20, 30. So the port number nine, which is remains same in the VLAN one. Hope you understood. So this is the way that we created a VLAN and designing a ports into a VLAN. Now, let me uh, try communicating between systems. Let's say, now you can see this is PC1. I'll try to ping from PC1 to PC2. They must communicate because they are in the same network, okay? So if you open the system, next up, command prompt, which is called CMD, IP config. Here you can see the system IP is 192.168.10.1 and 255, 255, 255.0 is the subnet mask. Let me try to ping 192.168.10.1. Same system, automatically will ping. I'll ping to 10.2. Yes, the second system. 10.3 is the third system. Let me try to ping to 10.4. Cannot because we don't have a system in the IP of 10.4. Now we have a system in 20.1. I'm trying to ping to 20.1 or even I'm trying to ping to 30.1. You know, which is, which is 20.1. So here you can see this is 20.1 system. And this is 30.1 system. But even if I'm trying to ping from 10.1 computer, request a time route, unable to go further. So how now we have tried configuring multiple VLANs and define a ports into a different VLANs. And if you try to ping from within a VLAN, they can communicate because they are in the same network. Let's say you try to ping from 20.2 to 20.3, as long as those two ports, port number five and port number six, are belongs to same VLAN, here in this case VLAN 20, they will communicate. Now we wanted to communicate from a VLAN, VLAN, let's say 10 to VLAN 20 or VLAN 10 to 30 or vice versa. In order to communicate in a different VLAN, we have something more to do, which is, So let's say 
intra VLAN routing. There are three ways. Okay, one is called SPI, switched virtual interface. Second way, second topic router on a stick. Stick. Third one, routed port. Routed port. We talk about SVI first. Switched virtual interface will route to the network by using virtual interface, which is called VLAN interface. That is the 90% design which we currently do for any uh, network architectures. So here, let's say you have a layer three switch, fine. And you can define two ports under VLAN 10, okay? And two ports in VLAN 2 and 2, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Now, this system IP 192.168.10.1. This system IP 192.168.20.1. In order to communicate them, the 10.1, when a traffic coming from one device, which is not into the same network, the traffic will go to the gateway. That's called outgoing interface, gateway. So we need to define into the system which is my gateway IP. Generally, that IP, either the first IP or last IP of that network. Here, I have defined 10.254 is the gateway for this computer. So when a traffic from one computer like this computer, which is not into the same network, they will look, this system will look into their gateway. When a system not into the same network, that system will look into their gateway, which I defined 10.255 in this case. So that traffic will go to 10.254, but we don't have any interface in the name of 10.254. So what we will do, we will create a virtual interface, interface VLAN 10, and we will set an IP 10.254. Same way, if the traffic needs to go to another network, this device will be forward that traffic to another VLAN, <clears throat> which is called interface VLAN 20. And I will assign an IP called 20.254, which is the gateway of the system. So in shortly from any network, if the network device wants to go out of the same network, they need to go first to the gateway. So we need a gateway interface. So here, what are we doing? We will create interface VLAN 10, interface VLAN 20. This IP, 192.168.10.20.254. This is 192.168.10.254. And any system within this VLAN 10, will set the gateway IP which is 10.254. So traffic outside the network from VLAN 10 system will go to here. Same way, here system under VLAN 20, which we need to define by manually to the system, that what's the gateway? The gateway is 20.254. If I'm defining different IP, that IP must be assigned here, but that only the one condition, they, should, they must be in the same network and this traffic will go to here, okay? So hope you are understand about the interval intra VLAN routing basic concepts. So inshallah we'll continue uh, in the part two. Okay, thank you, thank you for your time being with us in CMLN project.